Welcome to another demonstration of Burton's Media Group. We're going to be developing an application using Corona today, produced by Ansk Mobile. The particular project we're going to work on is developing an application that utilizes a SQLite database, which is commonly used in most mobile type devices, whether it be Android or the iPhone. Now I've already created a database here. This is a zip code database that I got from, or that I imported from the MaxMind uh, site, which has a lot of various postal code systems that are available for use as long as you give them recognition. So I'm giving them recognition where I pulled the United States database from and I imported it into this SQL. It comes as a uh, comma delimited file. I just simply imported it into a SQLite database utilizing the SQLite manager that you can put as a plug-in into Firefox and cleaned it up a little bit for use for my particular project. It had a few columns that I didn't need for this particular scenario. So here I've got a basic database listing all the zip codes for the United States. I've saved this as a zip.sqlite file and placed it in the same folder as my main.lua file for the Corona application. So we're ready to get started on our application. Here's my main Lua file. As you can see, it's primarily blank. All I've got is a short comment section at the top, and I'm ready to start adding the code to get started. The first thing that I need to do is let the Corona software know that we are going to be using the SQLite 3. So I'll add that as a required statement. Our next step is to set the path to our database and open the database for use inside of our application. So with this, we've used the system path for file, telling it that we are going to be getting the zip.sqlite database. And we are telling it that we're going to be looking in the system.resource directory. This tells it to automatically find this in the same location that we are storing the main.lua file. And then we do we are going to set the variable up for db as our database and set that equal to a SQLite dot or SQLite 3 dot open and passing it the path to the zip dot SQLite folder. Our next thing that we need to do is handle what the system should do should the person hit the close button on the application which basically means close the database so that the application doesn't the database doesn't become corrupted. We've created our function on system event event, and if that event is an application exit event, then close the database. I'm going to go ahead and send to my terminal a little bit of information to make it easier to work with the application, uh, telling us which version of SQLite 3 we're working with, and the path where it found the zip.sqlite uh, database. And now we're ready to get our data from the application. So we've created a variable called output and a variable called SQL and SQL is set equal to my SQL statement which is telling it to get everything from the zip code table.
And here we've, uh, I'm just simply going to, for this initial part, um, display it to the terminal so that we can see everything print out in the, the rows. Um, I can always go back and limit this or change this to how I want it to display in the actual application itself or in, inside the, uh, the iPhone or iPad or Android device that I'm putting this to. So the next last thing that I need to do is set up my system event listener to catch the application exit event should that occur. Now, if I've done everything correctly, it should display all of my cities, states, and their associated zip codes to my terminal window when I save the application. And it looks like I've got a small typo here on line 24. Let's go back and take a look at that. Yep, I didn't do my concatenate before the row.zip. So I'll add the concatenation there and save again. And there you can see it has displayed all of my information that I was looking for and put it to my terminal window. Of course we could easily write this out as well to the uh, terminal and let's take a look at how to do that. So the first thing that I'm going to do is create a variable for counting so that it will pro properly increment the spacing inside my um, application so it'll show it correctly. And I'll create a local just count and I'll put that count inside my loop here. I do want to initialize this count to zero so it doesn't mess everything up. So we no longer need to display to our my terminal. I'm not worried about showing that now. So I'm going to change this and set that to a local variable called text. And that'll show everything to the screen then. And then I just simply need to do a display.newText. So we'll do a local t equals display to new text passing it the text variable that we just created in the line above, having it go 20 pixels over and 30 pixels down, but I need that incremented so that it is uh, increased based upon the location of the count so that the text doesn't overwrite itself. So we'll have that do 20 times the uh, 20 pixels times whatever the count is so that we've got good spacing throughout the whole thing. Uh, we'll have it display in a native system font and set the size to a 14. And last thing we need to do is set the text terminal caller or set the text caller. And we'll just do a standard white. There we go. And we should be able to save and run now. did make one little typo here. It was trying to read everything in and display it to the screen and then off the screen to pixels areas that uh, were, did not exist and that did cause the Corona application to crash. Um, what we need to do is set a limit to what be, will be displayed and we'll just say the 10 first records. Now I should be able to launch and use it correctly. So I'll save and there you can see we've printed the first 10 records of my rec of the database based upon the uh, zip code so so this could then be used to populate a table or any number of other uses inside your application hopefully you found this useful and helpful for accessing information quickly and easily from a SQL database uh, we'll have more tutorials on corona iPhone Android development at burtonsmediagroup.com forward slash blog.